Okay, so we're going to start with this uh, pano shot. It was basically a total of 11 uh, photographs stitched together. You can see them all right here. So in order to merge these, you would click on the first shot and then you would scroll down to the last, hold shift and click the last one. And so they're all highlighted now. Then you would click, go to photo merge, click panorama. And then it will create your uh, panorama preview. And so as you can see, it stitched together uh, fine. Uh, and then you would just then hit merge and um, that would be it. Uh, I'm not going to hit merge because I've already uh, made it. Um, so I'll hit cancel. And basically once you merge it, this is what you get. I'm going to hit, hit uh, reset and then you can see exactly uh, how it looks. So obviously I had to crop it and I do a 16 by 9 crop. And then I have to clean up the edges here a bit. And that looks good right there. Now, once you do a pano and you try to go to transform, yeah, if you hit auto, then it did a little something. It looked like it straightened the horizon line. But when I hit guided, it doesn't do a whole lot. So I'm going to hit auto, and auto looks the best for, um, you know, for this example. So now we're going to start uh, looking at these uh, first section of adjustments. And um, basically, the main thing with this image, once I start to raise the exposure, I'm going to raise it to about uh, one and a half. Um, if I zoom out, you can really start to see these lines here in the sky. Now, um, fortunately for this image, there isn't clouds. So I'm able to fix that uh, pretty easily, and I'll show you how I fix it later in Photoshop after we do a quick edit in Lightroom. Uh, it's not too difficult, but basically these lines in the sky obviously are caused by, you know, doing the uh, pano shot, you know, moving the camera and uh, that sort of thing. I don't know if too many of you have trouble um, with your skies when you do a pano shot, this could be because I um, moved the camera a bit too much. Maybe I didn't uh, leave enough room, um, you know, from each previous image. But if you look at these images, it looks like I did pretty well by leaving a certain section of the frame and just sort of barely moving it uh, each time. But still, I have issues in the sky. So I don't know if this is a problem that a lot of you have. Um, if there were clouds in the sky, maybe it wouldn't be as noticeable. That's maybe a, a possibility. Uh, however, the reason I say I don't think I did anything wrong in terms of moving the camera is because um, everything else looks fine. I mean, everything's lining up fine. The merge is uh, obviously a, a clean one. Um, even if I zoom in on the sand, um, you know, there, there aren't inconsistencies, uh, even in the water. Now I'm going to continue on and I'm going to raise the contrast to about five. I usually don't go much higher than that. Uh, shadows, I'm going to raise probably to about 30, a little over. And then I'm going to drop the blacks down about 17. And then I'm going to raise texture about seven. This is pretty general what I do. I always raise texture to about seven. Contrast is about the same. Shadows can vary uh, depending on the image, but for this one, it was a bright day. Um, not the best uh, lighting conditions, but um, still it wasn't too bad. So now in the tone curve, I'm going to raise the lights to about eight. Drop the darks just a bit. And I'll raise the shadows up to about five. Sometimes I'll raise the shadow, sometimes I don't, but uh, for this one, I do want this uh, shadow side of the lifeguard tower to uh, be a little bit brighter. So just set up the middle control point at about um, 128, 128. Uh, that's perfectly in the center. And um, then obviously set up two points on the darks and two points for the lights. 
and I'm just going to adjust these uh, to taste. Then I'm going to raise this last control point here at the bottom uh, to get rid of any clipping in the darks. Uh, so it looks like I have to go a little too far. So I'm just going to raise it about two. Yeah, about two looks fine. It's not getting rid of the clipping, uh, unfortunately, but as you see, if I click on um, uh, that little triangle here on the uh, histogram, you're not seeing a lot of blue showing up, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, now I'm going to go into detail, and raise up uh, the amount to about maybe 50, 51. Radius, I'm going to leave at 1.0, and I'm going to hold the Option, uh, or I believe it's the Alt key for PC, uh, for Mac it's Option, and I'm going to just move this Detail slider, kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. Um, sometimes it helps to zoom in, and then use it. Put it about 34, and then the Masking, I'm going to do the same, hold the Option or Alt key, Put it about 15. Um, and that's it for detail. We already dealt with transform. For the effects, you can see what a vignette looks like. I think I'll just leave it at about minus six or minus five. Not too much of a vignette. Then one more thing. I'm going to add a bit of dehaze. Put it about 10. Now, obviously, those lines in the sky are really starting to show up now since I've um, adjusted the tone curve and, you know, etc. So, as I say, we'll fix that in Photoshop in a minute. But for now, uh, while we're in Lightroom, I am going to add a couple masks. Um, I'm going to start with a radial gradient. I'm mainly focusing on the lifeguard tower, basically in your image. Um, you know, if you're following along, focus on your subject. Um, I'm just mainly wanting to isolate the subject and brighten it just a touch. And I'm going to make this uh, sort of a bigger um, radial. Obviously, the lifeguard tower is uh, not the smallest. And then I'm going to shrink it down just a bit. And I'm going to raise the exposure, not much, just to about 0.25, so a quarter of a stop. And I'm going to raise the clarity to 5. Uh, as I say, this was the subject, so that's what's in focus. And I like to add a bit of clarity to whatever's in focus, if I can, if it works for the image. Now for the next mask, I'm going to click this little plus icon here to add another uh, layer, uh, mask. And I'm going to do Select Sky. Now, sometimes Select Sky works better than others in Lightroom. Uh, for this image, it works pretty well. So I'm going to drop the um, sky down to about minus, uh, a little over a quarter of a stop, so about minus 30 or so. And to counter it so I don't darken the sky too much, I'm going to raise the whites just to bring out those whites that are here uh, near the horizon line. And then I'm going to hit Done. And then now it's time to take this over to Photoshop. So to do that, you would hit uh, Command-E uh, on your keyboard. Uh, for PC, I believe it's uh, Control-E. Uh, or you can uh, go up um, to this uh, toolbar here. I believe Photo and Edit In. And you can see Edit In. Photoshop 2022. I'm going to hit this little eyedropper here and I'm going to select basically a mid-tone gray and then I'm going to go to create a new layer mask and I'm going to go up to solid color and then I'm going to hit the uh, layer mask and I'm going to invert it so now I'm going to use the brush tool and I'm going to paint in the sky basically that color I had selected which shows up right here next to the layer mask. So I'm going to make sure my brush is at 100% flow. I'm using a soft round brush which is the brush I always use uh, in Photoshop. So now I'm just going to paint the sky and get rid of all these uh, lines that are showing up here.
Now I got a little bit on the lifeguard tower, so to get rid of that, I just changed this white color swatch here to black. Hit OK. And since I'm painting with black, it's just getting rid of all of the um, excess. And this was something that I don't think you can do in Lightroom. You have to do it in Photoshop because in uh, Photoshop you have that little eyedropper tool to select a color and then you're able to paint uh, using that color with the brush tool. You can't do that in Lightroom, I don't think. Photoshop has a lot of useful tools that you just can't uh, get in Lightroom. Certain tools uh, like the brush tool uh, and then zooming in and out while you're using the brush tool. It works a lot better in Photoshop um, than it does in Lightroom. It's not as easy to zoom in and out while you're uh, brushing something in Lightroom. And then Now I'm going to clean up a little bit here at the bottom of the sky um, towards the horizon. Basically, instead of using a full 100%, I can bring it down to about uh, 20, uh, just to see what that will look like. But basically, I don't want the uh, near the horizon of the sky to be gray like it is at the top. Um, there was more light here at the bottom. So if I just kind of go over and clean that up, the sky starts to look more natural that way. I'm going to go into and create another uh, adjustment layer and I'm gonna do exposure. Now I'm gonna bring down the exposure of the sky uh, quite a bit. So almost two stops, a little over 1.90. And I'm gonna invert this layer. Now in order to make it just uh, affect the sky, and mainly I should say the top of the sky, um, right in here at the top of the image, I'm gonna use the gradient tool uh, which is in this column here, and it's called Gradient Tool, or you can push G on your keyboard. So now that I've inverted the layer, it got rid of the exposure adjustment, and so now I'm just going to start the Gradient Tool um, off the screen, or I'm, I'm sorry, off the image, and I'm going to just drag, and then it will basically fade that um, exposure um, that I did. Oh, I need to change this color swatch to white, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so color swatch is back to white. And now I'm gonna drag the gradient tool. And you see it just darkened up the top there. And then I can turn down the opacity of this. This is also another thing I like about uh, Photoshop. It has this opacity adjustment. Um, which, you know, Lightroom just doesn't have. Okay, so that looks good right, right in there. Maybe I'll do a little less. Something like that looks good. Now, um, let me raise the opacity just a bit. About 86. Now, in order to make the bottom uh, near the horizon look a bit brighter, just to give a bit more contrast in the sky. I'm going to use the um, brightening tool um, and I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to brightness and contrast and I'm gonna raise the brightness up um, maybe to about 30, 35. Just kind of see how that looks. So see it's, it's uh, brightening up this area here uh, near the horizon line and giving the sky a lot more contrast, which looks good. But I don't want it to affect the entire image. I don't want it to affect the sand so much and the tower, etc. So now I'm going to invert this layer because as I say, I don't want it to affect the uh, sand and the lifeguard tower as much as I do just the sky. So I'm going to use the brush tool for this and I'm going to change the flow to 100. And then I'm just going to uh, brush it on right here in the um, near the horizon and brighten it up. Now, if it gets on the lifeguard tower, it's not the end of the world. Um, I think it looks fine. 
However, um, I don't want it to affect the water as much as it is right now. So I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to change the brush tool to black. And that will allow me to erase uh, where I don't want that brightness to be. So I'll just start to do that now. And maybe right in here at the bottom of the lifeguard tower and like that. Okay. Now I can change the opacity. I don't want to drop it down too much. About 80% looks fine. Okay. So now the sky has more contrast. Obviously now since I use that solid color of gray, I got rid of the um, lines that were here. Um, so that looks much better. And so that's it for this image.